So today we're going to be looking at this USB hub. It's no normal USB hub though, so stay tuned to find out what makes it so unique. On the front of the box you can see an image of the product. It says it's RGB, it's got quick charge, 16 icons, USB free. It's the Control 7, so I'm presuming that means it's got seven USB ports on there and it's designed in Germany. On the back of the box it gives you a bit more information. It is multilingual and it gives you the full specifications on there as well. Where can you go and meet hundreds of people just like you? Strengthen existing relationships and forge new ones with vendors and distributors and meet some of the biggest names in the industry where you can go and see the newest tech and services that you need to make your IT business grow. And there'll be thousands of pounds worth of prizes up for grabs. Then what's more, you'll get that for a quid. TechMax 2023 will be on the 23rd of June at Magna Adventure and Science Centre near Meadowhall in Sheffield. This event will be over four times larger than last year's event, and this year's event will incorporate a live tech awards, dedicated meeting rooms, demo and interactive areas, and up to 800 other techs just like you. Get registered now at tftmax.com. So inside the box, you've got the hub itself. We'll take a closer look at that in a few minutes. We've got the power cable, which is a one and a half meters long. You've got a USB cable, which is 1.8 meters long. It's USB type A on both ends, and it is USB 3.0, hence the blue connection on the end. It would have been nice to have a USB type C connection, to be honest, either an adapter or an additional cable, because a lot of laptops are coming with a lot of USB-C ports these days and USB-A is slowly dying out, especially on laptops. And you've got the tabs on here, which we'll look at closely in a few minutes, which you've got symbols and numbers on. You've got the manual itself, which is mainly multilingual, but does have a few pictures, as well as a QR code on the back. Okay, let's have a close look at the hub itself. As you can see, it looks like a big black tube with a few buttons on there. This all does light up. It's got a few preset RGB patterns, which you can change by pressing the button on the end here, which will change between all the different effects available. It does look like there's a button on this end, but it doesn't actually do anything by the looks of it. Now, these buttons will be to turn off each of the USB ports, and you'll know which one's which because you put in these little bits of plastic here. Some have symbols on, some have numbers on, depending on what you want it to be, into here. So you can know which cable you've got plugged in each one. So let's just say you've got a microphone in one, you want to turn it on and off, a camera in another, USB pen, external hard drive, and so forth. You can label them up however you want, which is pretty good. On the other side, you can see obviously the holes where those little bits of plastic go in. You don't have to use those, but I suggest you do because they do light up with the RGB lighting as well, which corresponds with the button on the other side. And then you've got all these USB ports here as well. So there's seven in total, hence the name of the product, the Hub Control 7, because there's seven USB ports. The one on red, I'm guessing is going to be a fast charge port. So that'll be able to charge, uh, obviously, your phones and, stuff, phones and stuff like that really quickly. You've got your power connection there. That's obviously where you plug your power in. It powers it and so forth. And a USB Type-A connection, which is what you would plug into your laptop or PC. Again, no options for USB type C in any way or form, which is a shame. Would have been nice to at least have one connection for that on there, but that's how it goes, I suppose. The base of the product is rubberized, does have their logo on there as well, so it'll stop it sliding around and slipping on your desk, which is pretty good. Okay, so I've turned the studio lights off so you can see this. You can actually see the light shine through the button holes there. It actually looks brighter on the camera than it is in person. And to be honest, they're not the brightest lights in the world. If I put the overhead lights on and not even the main studio lights, it does go a lot duller and a bit washed through. It might have been a good idea, especially with these bit, to make them more of a smoky glass so it allows it to pick up a lot more light. But again, obviously they probably tested that, I would have thought. But again, it does give you a good few options on there. So if you are wanting to enable or mute each one or stop each one, you basically press the button down. And as you can see, it lights up bright white. So you know it's in use or not. And you can do that with any of them. You can press the button on the side to go through different RGB effects or set colors. I think it said there was about 12 of those. I'll clarify that above if it is. But again, you've got all these different icons you can use. Some of the preset ones are numbers instead. 
you do have an option for a lightning bolt as well and their logo as well and it looks like a download symbol or an external hard drive potentially on that one a camera looks like a copy sort of icon or a laptop or a computer or dual screen probably i'm guessing you've got one what's for light so if you've got a ring light or a studio light you've got a headset you've got a microphone and the last one on there looks like for a mobile phone so it gives you a rough idea and again these just pull out if you're not wanting to use a specific one and you can put a number in there instead if you wanted if you prefer to go by numbers but there you go it gives you a rough idea it looks pretty good pretty unique pretty different bear in mind it does look brighter from behind than it does from the front which i suppose is a benefit because you don't really want it too bright if you're streaming because it can glaring at you but again if you've got a lot of lights on especially studio lights which i'm going to turn on now just to give you an idea it does go very washed out so i'm just putting those on that's one light on two lights three lights and so forth as you can see the coloring on there does get a little bit hard to see so if you've got a lot of lights on you will struggle to see the rgb effects on there but otherwise does everything it says on the tin okay as you can see here we've got the hub actually set up you can see the camera here obviously because we've got the camera set up and everything as well and the hub's pretty good one of the things i didn't mention before but inside the box there is a cable tidy there you can slot the cables through what are going into the hub to make it look nice and tidy so it gives you a rough idea and well it looks pretty good to be honest and now if i want to turn something on and off in our studio bear in mind this is our live studio we're still under construction but it gives you a rough idea we're going to have two seats two monitors and so forth multiple cameras we can just turn things off with just a button on here so i can turn the camera off by just pressing the button on the hub and away you go it goes off we can turn the microphone on and off as you can see the lights go on and off and the same with the keyboard and any other devices we want to with a click of a button which is really ideal for us i hope you enjoyed this video and know i did why not check out one of our other videos by clicking this box up here or this one just down here otherwise you can give us a thumbs up like subscribe comment below let us know what you think and we'll see you next time